If you're dealing with depression or frequent bouts of unhappiness, I've got a simple, cost-free remedy that's available to everyone and has a track record of making real difference in people's lives. It's not a spray and pray. Those around me who have tried it swear by its mood lifting effect and have been hooked for life. Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome aboard. Here at Ice Mind Body, our objective is to construct the most extensive and informative video library on health and mind, particularly exploring an unconventional remedy for several disorders, cold exposure and cold therapy. Our goal is to empower our audience to successfully advance in their health journey. We all experience moments of unhappiness and difficult periods in our lives. However, when these episodes occur too frequently, they can have a significant impact on our relationships, work, and overall lifestyle. Depression is a fairly complex condition with multiple contributing factors, including genetics, environmental stressors, and cognitive factors. There is a variety of symptoms and their intensity, but common symptom can be persistent sadness or a low mood, losing interest in activities that were once enjoyable, including hobbies, social interactions, and work. Changes in appetite or weight, insomnia, fatigue, feeling tired or lacking energy, even after a good night's sleep. Difficulty concentrating, making decisions or remembering things. And some physical symptoms such as headaches, digest, digestive problems, and other unexplained aches and pains. After reviewing numerous papers and studies, it becomes clear that science has not definitively identified the precise cause of and origin of depression and mood disorders. However, what is currently widely accepted is the monoamine hypothesis. The monoamine hypothesis is a well-known theory that suggests that depression is related to a deficiency of certain neurotransmitters particularly serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. According to this hypothesis, low levels of these neurotransmitters can result in altered mood regulation and contribute to depressive symptoms. That is why antidepressant medications that are often prescribed address the neurotransmitter imbalance uh, in, in depression. These uh, medications work in various ways, such as by increasing the availability of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain. For example, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, prevent the reabsorption of serotonin, leaving more of it available in the brain to improve mood. It is crucial to emphasize that if you are taking any of these medications, you should never discontinue them without consulting your doctor. Many of these medications should not be abruptly discontinued due to their potential for severe withdrawal effects. Additionally, if you are experiencing intensive or clinical depression, it is imperative to seek the guidance of a healthcare professional before taking any other steps. Now let's look at the three neurotransmitters that play roles in depression. First, serotonin, which is often referred to as the feel-good uh, neurotransmitter. It plays a crucial role in uh, regulating mood, emotions, and sleep. Low levels of serotonin are linked to feeling sadness, anxiety, and irritability, which are common in depression. Norepinephrine is involved in body's fight or flight response to stress. An imbalance in norepinephrine levels can lead to symptoms uh, like increased stress, relentlessness, and agitation, all of which are associated with depression. Dopamine is associated with pleasure and reward. Changes in dopamine levels can affect motivation and the ability to experience pleasure, making it a factor in anhedonia, which is loss of interest or pleasure often seen in depression and addiction. In our previous videos, uh, we delved into the topic of how cold immersion or cold showers can stimulate the production of these neurotransmitters. If you're new to cold exposure and haven't had the chance to watch our previous content, 
I strongly recommend checking out some of our videos, especially uh, the ultimate guide to cold exposure, which I have conveniently linked in the description below. In brief, the water should be sufficiently cold to give you an initial shock, tempting you to jump out immediately. But then you should strive to endure it for a minute or two. As you acclimate to the cold exposure, gradually extend the duration. If you are interested in progressing further with cold therapy, you can consider transitioning to an ice bath or cold plunge. Personally, I have found full immersion in a cold plunge to be not only more effective, but also more enjoyable. For a detailed comparison between the two methods, I have provided a link into the video in which I discuss them further. Before we continue, if you are as passionate as I am about cold exposure, hit that like and subscribe button. This is a new channel and I'm committed to building the most comprehensive library on cold exposure and cold therapy, where I will be sharing all my knowledge and experience. In addition to raising uh, the levels of these neurotransmitters, cold exposure reduces inflammation in the body. Chronic inflammation is believed to be linked to various mood disorders, including depression. Also, stress reduction. Exposure to cold can activate the body's stress response, leading to the release of stress hormones like cortisol for a very short period. While this might so seem counterproductive, co controlled exposure to stressors, also known as hormesis, can help the body adapt to the stress over time, potentially leading to improved stress resilience and mood. Also, stress reduction. Exposure to cold can activate the body's stress response, leading to the release of stress hormones like cortisol for a very short period. While this might seem counterproductive, controlled exposure to stresses, also known as hormesis, can help the body adapt to stress over time, potentially leading to improved stress resilience and mood regulation. Improve the sleep. Cold exposure in the evening can promote better sleep. Quality sleep is crucial for maintaining a stable mood. If you do cold exposure in the evening to feel relaxed and ready for sleep, finish with a warm, not too hot shower. You want your core temperature to stay cool, but leave with a nice and relaxed feeling. However, if you're doing cold immersion in the morning for, a, for an energy boost, you can finish with cold water, dry off and get going. When it comes to addressing depression, I suggest turning the process into a regular and enjoyable ritual, something you turn to when you're not feeling your best. Combining cold immersion with a sauna or a hot bath is an excellent idea. This combination can make the entire experience more invigorating and divert your attention away from the day-to-day -day issues that often feel magnified with depressive disorders. Regardless of when scientists manage to reach a consensus and confirm the causes and origins of depression, there is one thing for certain. Cold immersion feels fantastic. There are times when I return from work feeling rather fatigued with low energy and mood. However, a quick dip in the cold tub and I'm revitalized and ready to face the world once more. Anyway, unless you give it a shot for a few weeks and allow it the time to work is magic, you won't truly understand its potential. If you are eager to learn more about cold therapy, explore our other videos here. And don't forget to show your support by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more content. Wishing you the best of luck in your journey to better health and until next time, stay cool and stay healthy.